Good evening. It's always a good day, no matter what kind of uh, weather we have. It's like that Mother Nature is always giving us rain, especially where I'm from, it's always warm and hot. So uh, I'm an Indian. So I have to go by what they say. I have to go by Indian time and be late. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know where that came from, but I know back home that's what they say. Indian time is always late. I guess because we just don't try and hurry everything like that. So my name is uh, Rupert Encinas, and I come from Arizona, in our language, we call that place where I come from, Chukshon, which uh, means later on, but it had a lot to do with water. It had a lot to do with uh, people when there's water, people live by the water. Water is life. So it was called Chukshon in our language. Later on became Tucson, and then Alishon also came from our language. It also means uh, later on became Arizona. It had a lot to do with the springs that c come from the hills. Again, water. So that's where I call my home in our beliefs and ways, you know. We, what we do is we say, like people would ask us, where do you come from? And we would say, we were our afterbirth from our mothers. They buried them in a sacred place. So that's where I come from. Because our people are always, uh, you know, know about the earth, know about everything, all about life. It's like I was saying, the Mother Nature, you know, always gives us surprises. It rains, it gets hot, and then it snows, especially over here. So I just want to introduce myself. I, my mother is um, also, she's a full blood on autumn. And my father is also a full blood Don Autumn. Autumn in our language means humans. We are human beings. We could describe it in three, three ways, you know. We say man, woman, autumn, children, autumn, in general, people, autumn, and, and human, human beings. That's how we are known. I've been uh, following my spiritual ways of our ancestors since I was very young. I followed my grandfathers, you know, the way that they had ceremonies and the way that they have curing ceremonies that would last the whole night. And so I grew up with that. I grew up with my language. And uh, I met a man in, uh, as I was traveling uh, in, in the 70s, and I was living in o o Oregon. I lived in Corvallis, Eugene, in Portland, Oregon. And there I met a man, and his name is an uh, Indian name, Tatonka Ahikita, uh, which means Ray Buffalo. Also, his English name is um, Devere Eastman. There's a book about him of one of his relatives in the wisdom of Native Americans. And he was named uh, Oisa, which is Charles Eastman. And I wouldn't have a doubt that one of his relatives come from him. 
So, I have a spiritual name. My name is Rupert Encinas. Rupert, I thought Rupert was very English, but I found out when I was traveling in Germany that I see my name here and there. Rupert with two Ps. And then my last name, Encinas, is also come from Spanish. We were encountered by Spanish people in the 16 or 1500s, a Jesuit priest and all this uh, Spanish from Spain came to our country. And uh, so when they pulled, took our Indian names, they gave us these last names and names from the Bible or from the book. You know, some of them are named James, some of them are named uh, Peter. Uh, and then, uh, you know, and then they have last names that are in Spanish. So there's Lopez's, Gomez's, and all different names like that. In fact, around Los Angeles is also a Spanish name. And San Diego is a Spanish name. So some of the Span Spaniards came through there. So. What I'm going to do at this time is uh, we have a, a film on my mentor. As I was talking about him, um, I met him in uh, German. I mean in po Poland. What am I saying? I met him in Portland, Portland, Oregon, and <laughs> not Poland. So I met him in there and I kind of followed him around and we would do ceremonies, you know, pipe ceremonies. We would do uh, powwows, powwows, that's another ceremony, and sweat lodges. And um, through him I learned a lot from, besides my own, own ways of uh, life, our, our way of culture, our way of uh, our traditional ancestors' beliefs and ways. But anyway, I followed him. This was in in the, in the uh, 70s and he took me to Sundance in uh, uh, um, South Dakota, Greengrass, South Dakota. And there I met other uh, mentors and I'll talk about them because uh, what I do in my talks is I, I want you to see, I want you to touch, I want you to feel than just me talking about it, like this eagle feather. This eagle feather is real, comes from Creator. I'll talk more about this uh, ceremonies, but now we, we're going to show you this uh, little small short. So you know who my uh, mentor is. And how I came to be known. Don Autumn Nation, my people.
So, when I was living in, in Arizona, about eight, 19, uh, about 1990s, I was getting this uh, postcards from him from Germany telling me that there is a Sundance in Germany. He was telling me that they have sweat lodges, that they have Germans that dress up like Native Americans, like Indians. And uh, so the past time I've been coming here, the, the last uh, was two years ago, I found some family that uh, knew I went to a Sundance near Kassel, Germany. And um, so I met some families there that knew uh, Tatanka Ahikita. But he wasn't at this Sundance at that time. So uh, and last year we went to another Sundance over near Munich. And, and also uh, there was a man, and he was from uh, Oh, he's German, but he was married to a Lakota, and he was from Black Hills, South Dakota. And so, I uh, finally this year, I went to a Sundance here near between Frankfurt and Munich. And um, I finally met these people there that knew him. And some of my other mentors that I, I'm going to show you here in, in, on the, you know, that I met there, I mean, I know them because uh, these people have met these uh, uh, spiritual medicine people from, from uh, uh, South Dakota, North Dakota, Oregon, around that area, and Montana. So when I was there, I was... Uh, really um, touched to, to where I now found the, the legacy of, of this man here, the Debir Eastman. Because people around there knew him, what kind of a man he, he, he was. And uh, through him I learned a lot. And like I said, you know, all of these teachings that I followed throughout my life, spiritual beliefs and spiritual ways of our ancestors. And our ways of life is very simple. It's not complicated because we believe in all the life on this earth. In fact, our ancestors, they followed the ways of nature, that the tree is alive. In fact, he talks about it too. He talks about that if, if we have a shadow, that is our spirit. And we are all spiritual people. The tree has a shadow. All life on this earth has a spirit. So it was said that not to tamper with all the life here because it's going to affect us in life. So we uh, have this uh, kind of uh, teachings about all the life on this earth has a purpose on this earth. And that's how I, my, my uh, grandfathers. My grandfather also, he was during the time in the 1940s or 1920s, a lot of our young youth, nine years old up to 12, 14, they were rounded up by the government and sent them to boarding schools. And when they were at these boarding schools, they were treated not so, treatment wasn't so good because at that time there was assimilation. They want all the native people to become like 
the newcomers that came to the Indian country. And so they had, they stripped them from their, from the culture, the way they dress, buckskin, and also the long hair that they wore. They, they cut their hair and told them not to speak the, their language, that English was only, the English gonna be, uh, language going to be used. So that's what happened with my grand, grandfather. He was sent to a boarding school, and then when he came back, he wasn't any different because he held on to his language. He held on to his uh, way of ceremonial ways. And so he also revived some of the ways of our people, our, our, our old ways. And so that's... Uh, story of my, my grand, grandfather. A lot of uh, other grandpas and grandmas, uh, they had to, they were educated because we had our own way of education, which it was down to nature. But when the grandmas and grandfathers came from be being taught differently, they started teaching their children, the way they were treated in the boarding schools. And so, uh, like I said, it's, it's, it's something that happened with our people there, you know. They um, brought a lot of diseases and they brought all of this uh, modern, wanted us to be modern, wanted to, our people to be farmers, wanted want our people to, but we had to accept that in time, I guess we didn't have any choice but to, because we want our people to live, so we started to live like them. So, uh, that boarding school era, where our people were forced to learn the English language, today it's like that with our people. We have, uh, language teachers now and um, we have some of the elders that still hold on to the old ways uh, like Devere Eastman he's uh, one of them that uh, like I said you know I, he w I was traveling with him and he was also the first one to take me to a Sundance in uh, Greengrass South Dakota which he prepared for me to, to uh, go through this uh, an utmost uh, sacred Sundance of the Lakota people. So uh, that what happened with my upbringing. My upbringing was um, when I was very young, I wasn't too much exposed to the modern things. We didn't have water where I lived. We didn't have no electric where I lived. We always had to go out and get wood or go out and get water. So some of these things that happened in our past, you know, is, is because, you know, of the treatment. We have a movement today in this uh, Indian country. There's a man, he's a Mohawk. He's a, his name is Don Coyas, and he started this boarding school going to different uh, Indian reservations. Again, we were put on reservations, little pieces of land. And he started to go to boarding school where there's boarding school, and he talked about people get together, and we have to talk about what happened to our people in boarding schools. And so there was a movement, and this movement was called to, to uh, forgive. Forgive the unforgivable. It, because we can't move forward in life, we have to, we're going to be stuck and not move forward. And what 
It's called it's a trauma, historical trauma, historical grief. So we have to move forward and put all of that behind us. But one of the things that we still have is our ceremonies. Like I was talking about, you know, the sun dance, one of the utmost sun dances. So maybe I could sing you a song here. I don't like this English language. <laughs> because what did I say just now? Maybe? Isn't that something? Why do we use these words? Instead of saying, I'm going to sing you a song. I'll try. I might. Very doubtful. Very doubtful words. But it was said, one day we're going to have one language. It was said, one day we're going to have one way. So I see this movement when I come to Europe. I see, I hear everybody talk this language. And this is how we communicate. I carry this with me wherever I go because songs are so healing and this is made out of elk it has two sides when we talk about this drum we talk about the heartbeat the heartbeat of our life on this earth and that's how we use this. When we do that, we think about the life of animals. We think about all life. So this song is about um, I sing a healing song. We sing this at the sun dance. And this, sun, and this uh, song mentions the Chanupa. The Chanupa and Wakantanka, the great spirit. Ya, hera, ya, we, ya, we, ya, we, ya, we, ya, ha, ya, ya, hera, ya, we, ya, he, ya, we, ya, ha, ya, ya, hera, ya, we, ya, we, ha, ya, That word mitako oyasin comes from the Lakota language, which means that all life on this earth, the trees, the little braid of grass that grows upon this earth, 
all life, even in the ocean, all the life that's under the sea or the ocean is. We say we are all related to all of this. And the crawling creatures that's on the, on the earth, you know, the smallest little animal to the to the four legged and on up to the winged ones, the flying ones that are up there. And we're all related that way. Each and every one of us, we are related. We're all human. So we use this a lot to this language here to greet all the life on this earth. That's how we use it. So uh, I guess my, my mentor is not going to speak, so maybe we'll do something different. No, of course he's going to speak. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's ready, it's ready. <coughs> of course it's going to speak. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's so much peace. So much peace, my puppy. Which <laughs> O great spirit grandfather, look down this way with compassion among your people, Trunkashila grandfather. <clears throat> Send down your wisdom and your knowledge and your understanding and your good thoughts. O great spirit, Today I send my voice to you. Today I will gossip about you and say good things about you, Grandfather. To have compassion for all of us today, Grandfather. Of all my relatives, Okay, you can sit down. <laughs> we are asked to go and so I'm very honored to be here and to share uh, knowledge and wisdom that come from the great spirit and understanding that come from Mother Earth and we'll share that knowledge with you uh, among other things and uh, we don't have too much time and so uh, to some of the things that I don't say too, you know. So, uh, and also, uh, I'm gonna touch on different subjects uh, because we're not all the same. We don't all have one, uh, we don't have one mind. We all have our own minds. It's like everybody has different fingerprints, okay? Uh, we all have different minds. And so we think, we hear, and we feel different about different things. And so uh, this way uh, I will touch on different kinds of things and I never know what I'm going to say and sometimes I surprise myself. And so I always ask my father, uh, Great Spirit, Sankashila, grandfather, to help me because uh, I'm not educated in, in the sense that, you know, I, I know algebra and, and all that, you know, but uh, that is not important to me. And so I know Great Spirit help me in everything I do and so today I want to uh, share some of that knowledge and I don't know everything okay and I never will know everything and this is the way the great spirit set everything up it is like this circle here we see uh, 
there's no end or no beginning to knowledge and wisdom and understanding. And the old people say that if we ever solve all the mysteries of the universe, then the world will become boring for our children. So that is why we, uh, we never know everything and we never will know everything because these are the mysteries that the great spirit, my father, uh, who created everything here, and he made it this way. And so life is always interesting and, uh, you know, and there's no end to education, but we keep continue to learn forever and ever. And, uh, it is our tradition to share a little bit about my myself. Uh, and it's hard because uh, it's, we don't normally talk about ourselves. And this is uh, because, you know, it's hard on my ego. And when I hear people clap their hands, you know, that's hard on my ego too. So our native people, we never clap our hands, you know, when somebody talks. So we have to watch that today because of our ego. And uh, ego is our greatest enemy. And so uh, we have to be careful of that. So there are many things to share. Um, I have several names. My family name was up. Wiyokiyampata means a man from the east. And that's my family name. And my childhood name was Apeo Hatanka. It's a uh, big man. And my adult spiritual name was uh, Tatanko Hitika. It means a uh, great buffalo. It, I was named by the spirit people, not by human beings. And this is the name that they gave me, my guide, and so on through life. And the, uh, that I get from these animals, and the knowledge and wisdom, and we have a place to go uh, to learn. We don't go to Hartford or uh, you know those big universities, but we go on top of a sacred mountain, and we spend four days and four nights without food and water, and we make an altar, and we have we pray in a certain way, and uh, we have visitation from the animals, the birds, winged friends, and. Uh, Tungashila let us see uh, things and he revealed many things to me as a result of this um, vision quest. And uh, I've been sun dancing for the past 10 years, 12 years, and do the secret sun dance, it's a spiritual dance, and uh, we do that. And you know, to, we say thank you to Tungashila for all the good life he gave us in food and abundance of all things, spiritual uh, sustenance and all that. And, he let us see things uh, on the other side, but it is hard to be Indian, but uh, again, it's very beautiful. And so we practice these ways. Uh, I shouldn't always say call ourselves Indian. We're not from India, so you know, I don't like to call ourselves Indians. We are native people, we are uh, indigenous people, and we were always here. We didn't come from Mongolia or somewhere over here. We were created here on this red mother earth. And we were created from the red clay of Mother Earth. That's how they call us, red man. And, uh, but uh, well, we'll get to this, some of that kind of learning. Why it's very important that you know, we must lie today to one another and uh, justify our own guilt, maybe, and things like that, you know. And so, uh, so I was in the, visited on a sacred mountain by uh, the Thunderbird. And there he gave me some power. And uh, it's very, uh, lots of detailed and intricate understandings. Sometimes I don't understand that myself. But uh, nevertheless, uh, I was told to help people. It didn't say just the Indian people, native people, but to help all people that wish and who wants to have the will to learn. And so those are my instructions. And that is one reason why that I've been very fortunate to travel up in Burrow and uh, up in uh, Snow, Alaska to the Four Corners and they share this knowledge with our people and clear down to all of the United States and Europe and Switzerland. And uh, so I'm very happy that uh, Tungashila, my grandfather, uh, he looked after me and he take me to these places because uh, it's time now to share this knowledge uh, according to the sacred uh, hoop, we call it sacred hoop, and uh, it's time to share all this knowledge with people, and that's the way that it's supposed to happen at this time, and because, you know, there's some time in our lifetime that uh, we all 
we'll search for the power that made all these things here. we we'll search for that, you know. We wonder why it makes the sun come up, why, how the trees grow, and why the leaves fall off, and how it makes it rain, you know, what makes me breathe in and out. Uh, what is the Mother Earth? We don't know, we call it dirt, you know, but we don't have words for dirt in my language, and we call it Mother Earth. And uh, Mother Earth works 24 hours a day to feed me and all my creature relatives here. So, sometimes in our life we may wonder, you know, who made all of this? The power, you know, a very awesome power here and in the universe. And we all search for that one time in our life. We ask questions, you know. And so, when the time comes and we get the calling, uh, then we must uh, obey that and respect that calling for us to, it's time to search and for knowledge and truth and understanding and wisdom that we get from Kashila, Great Spirit. And, um, and we, many things have been revealed to us and uh, we share that knowledge. Some of the knowledge is, uh, I share is from the old people too also. And there's ancient knowledge. And the, the, I have two languages. I speak two languages and English is my second language. <clears throat> I learned that and when I was captured and uh, forced to go to school and forced to go to church. And I went to school five and a half years and I learned English and uh, I got brain damage out of that, so. <laughs> I learned how to speak English, too. And, uh, so it was good, though. I learned how to sign my name and uh, maybe count money and things like that. You know? So it's very important in this life is to count your money all the time. <laughs> but nevertheless, I learned, I learned about uh, the Christian church and uh, how they have the devil here, they brought the devil and all that, you know. And uh, I learned many things that I use today and I look back and reflect on those and all the knowledge. Uh, and I lost my innocence too in that process of getting Christianized and getting educated and, and learning how to speak with this forked tongue. And, you know, it's really uh, been uh, disastrous. But anyway, we find our way back. And uh, to uh, our language, is a, um, it's a, a spiritual language, the Malakota language. It's an ancient language. And it was set down here by Tungashila. And we learned this language. We, we, it's fashioned after nature and creation. And there's no ego in nature and creation. And uh, it is a, a description of the thing that we see and an expression of the thing that we see and we hear and we feel around us. And so this way it ties us with nature in our search for the power that made all of this and we search that God, in our search we find that God is nature and nature is God. And so this way our language is a spiritual language and it, it, it connects us with Tukashila, a great spirit, my father uh, and my grandfather and my mother earth, and my grandmother earth, and all my relatives out there because we share the same creator. The same creator made all of that out there and he made me also. Therefore, that's my relatives. Everywhere I look at my relatives, the animals. You know, the animals are, are perfect. Creatures are perfect, except myself. We find that out, you know. And this, this way, and the, we regard the creatures uh, as sacred, you know. And this is where they give us medicine, you know. That's where the medicine man gets his power, is from these animals. Good. And uh, it's good to know that, you know. I'm the only animal here that can be corrupted, you know. I can become criminally minded, you know. And, uh, so we learn, we don't have Bible. So everything out there is, is, is my Bible, you know. And all the animals, they have medicine. Some of them are, uh, have reflect our own personality. 
and uh, so it teaches us. The way we teach our children is to tell, to tell stories of these animals, these beautiful stories. And we also have a trickster and Lakota, I mean, the, the plain people. Uh, then we have Spider, Iktomi is our trickster, and he uh, is kind of like our ego, you know. And uh, we always fall short of things because of our ego, and it denies us many things, knowledge and wisdom and all that. And um, so there's many beautiful stories about the animals and their ability to transform themselves into human beings. Today, our medicine people also can transform themselves into animals. These are gifts of God, gifts of great spirit. Tokashila, my grandfather, um, great spirit. These are gifts that uh, is very beautiful to live here in harmony and balance with nature, you know. And uh, we call this place a spiritual island. And I think in the Bible it says heaven on earth and, and, and so on, you know. But we regard this as that too. And uh, I don't look too much about the Bible because I never got into that, but I know I was forced into Christianity. I learned from hearing people say all that, I learned a little bit about it. But uh, it's a good book. And of course, it's been distorted here and there, but nevertheless, uh, there's some truth to it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> And um, so we don't we don't have a word for shadow in my language, okay. And we go out there in the sunlight, and uh, we see that what thing we call shadow, we call it nahi, and that's our spirit. Our shadow is our spirit. Yeah. When we have shadow, we have power. We don't know what I know in some. People call it soul. I mean, I walk in my soul in my shoes all the time, you know. So I didn't quite get understand that. And we don't walk on our soul. But uh, we call it Nahi, the spirit. And uh, it's very powerful. And everything that casts a shadow has a spirit. The bird, even a blade of grass, the cloud, the mountain, the stone, everything has a spirit. That's why we call it spiritual island. And our spirit, and the great spirit in Tokashila, when he created all of this, he created some spirits to help him create and plant this garden of Eden. And after all this was finished, they created the animals and the birds and the creatures. And when this was all finished, then they went back to the spirit world. And this is where they dwell. And we call on them and to help us in times of hard and disaster times. And um, so they come and they help us with knowledge and sickness and healing and all of those things that we need today. And so this is uh, it's very beautiful. And uh, we must always feel good, you know. Uh, the spirit watches us 24 hours a day. You know, they watch us. We never lie. Our people never lie because Tokashila, our grandfather, great spirit, never lied to us. Never lied to us. So we never lie either, you know. So uh, it's good and to know that you know, we are watched all the time. And uh, <clears throat> this. The uh, sacred hoop. All of you can see that. Uh, can you see, you know, circle like this? Circle? <laughs> okay. I know in the European education they teach us a linear type of thought, you know, going this way. They said there's no past, there's only the future, and they burn their bridges as they go, so you can't turn back. And when we have ego, we're going to have problems. I know the English language is, is nothing but ego. Me, myself, I, mine, we, me, and all that, you know. All the time you hear yourself talk, you know. When you have that kind of mentality, you're going to have problems. Because ego breeds fear, racism, hatred, resentment, jealousy. We know that. This, we have this circle of life. This is the way Tugashila made everything in a circle. The circle tells us that the past is the future, and the future is the past. 
The old must give away to the new, and the new must give away to the old. Place your colors here, the red. They start out with the black. This is west, this is north. Red. East is yellow. South is white. And these are the four children that the Great Spirit created and he put here on the earth simultaneously with teachings on how to live in harmony and balance with nature and all the things in the universe and the stars, the star nation. So these are the four children that Tungashila he put here to find their way. The red man, the yellow man, the white man, and the black man. That's why this is our Garden of Eden, North America, um, Alaska to South America, where people discolor skin, you know. We were always here. We were created from the red clay of the Mother Earth. We never come from some foreign place. Anyway, and uh, so we know these things are going to happen. We know many things are going to happen. It tells us, this sacred hoop tells us, you know, what's going to happen, what's taking place, what has already happened because of many factors in life that we don't understand. We're going to self-destruct pretty soon. Because we know that many things have taken place since we were children. You know, we believe that everybody is good. Great Spirit Tunkashila, Grandfather, he created everything good here. He never created one single bad thing. He created man. And we start on this circle in the south. We're born pure. We're born innocent. There's nobody born bad. He never created anybody bad. He made all people good. It is only through man and his ignorance that he created the bad things of life. Everybody is born good. We see everybody as a good person. Because the way that God can create everything. So we know that we, we see everybody as good. There is nobody bad. We can talk about that when we have our little circles. And uh, we reveal to you many things, you know, that um, we have we don't have a religion, okay? Our people don't have religion. We have what they call a spiritual, a belief system. Because uh, religion deals in good and evil. We have one mind that everything is good. When we see somebody, it's a good person. This way we live close to God. We don't have hell, we don't have Satan, we don't have devil. But when we die, we, we go home. Our spirit goes back to spirit land. Just call heaven, and uh, our body goes back to the Mother Earth. And when we die, when we die, uh, we have wake for four nights, our people. Four days and four nights, they stay up with this person. But at this time, the spirit, the eagle, they take him around this circle. They, they take him around that circle. Four days, four nights. And they show him all the good things he's done in life. And this, he goes to heaven, goes home. the other way when I went to forced to go to church and they said uh, God is up there and, uh, he's writing down all the bad things he's done in life you know and when he died in a pocket to you and send you to hell you know <laughs> but we we, uh, we think the other way you know so we try to be good to each other we have compassion love honesty trust and compassion you know to be good to each other because Tugashila is watching us all the time. Yeah. He watches. And we're really good. Yeah, that's how we go back home. Yeah. Mother Earth is waiting for us again. Come home. So this way we have a 
pure mind and a pure conscience and uh, really close to uh, Tankashila and Great Spirit. And it's always good to know, you know, all the things, there's no such a thing as accidents and uh, we have a spirit and uh, sometimes we, we really don't understand uh, because we have never been developed spiritually. Yeah. We need to develop. I can't give you spirituality. Or neither can you give it to anybody else. It's something that we must develop within ourselves with knowledge and wisdom and the truth and, and, and a great spirit and mother and, and we talk with these spirits. Uh, they help us. We have problems today. Uh, we, we don't give our problems to Jesus and let him deal with that thing. But we ask for help from these spirit people and uh, they help us. We have to do the other half. He helped us 50% and uh, we'll, uh, we'll do the rest. This way we, we exercise a powerful mind that the great spirit give us. They gave us a very powerful mind to, to think with. And, uh, and our, we have three natures about us, you know. Mental, spiritual, and physical nature. It's like the great, this is sweet grass, this is Mother Earth perfume, and uh, we use it and kind of clear up our mind a little bit, get some of the negativity out of our minds. And so when we think, and we can always think good, you know. And uh, we're not perfect, you know, but we want to be correct, you know. So, uh, there are many things, the mysteries that go on here, especially today, about the human mind and how it's been conditioned. And, uh, and uh, we'll maybe talk about that, you know, uh, when you want to learn about something, if you want to learn about your sickness, uh, our sicknesses, we must learn how it began, how it began, and because of our mind must be, if it's not, if it's not, if it's corrupted, and if it's polluted, and our spirit's going to get polluted, and then our body has no resistance. And so we're open to all kinds of sicknesses. And uh, so we'll talk about everything in general. We don't want to, you know, we want to understand. I'm sure, I hope that all of you came with an open mind today, if you want to learn, you know. But uh, again, it's up to you. We are the only animals that are here can make that choice, you know, because today we got two minds, and uh, it's very hard for us to believe and have faith in anything. We can talk about that some more uh, when it comes time about our two-mindedness. You know, we have one mind before when we were here alone. Then when these people came here and we became to have two minds. And that is a suffering that we have today. Their mind is suffering. You know, and it's very hard for us. I'll talk about the language too, you know, the English language. It's the only language in the world that's backwards, and uh, <laughs> so we do everything backwards, you know. <laughs> and we have lots of ego in it. Oh golly, you know, and uh, we lose touch with Mother Earth. We lose touch with Great Spirit. We lose touch with our animal uh, relatives. And we're all relative because, you know, God made these four tribes of people. That's why I say, me talk with us, all my relatives. Whether you want, maybe you don't like it, we're still relatives, you know. Because God made it that way, you know. We're all relatives. We all share the same God, the same Creator. So aren't you and I are relatives? Maybe you don't like that, but that's okay, you know. That's, that's, that's your choice again. Because we're the only animals here that uh, now our mind is corrupted, you know. If you didn't accept that, that's okay. You know, that's good. Everything is good, you know. <laughs> Whatever you think, you know, if you, if you see it that way, then uh, that's all right. If you like to live in misery, that's good, you know. I like that. <laughs> that's your business, you know. 
Oh yeah, I just want to share share this knowledge with you, you know, today and uh, some more yet? Huh? Okay, you cut me off. All right. too much time here and uh, so uh, we'll share a whole lot of things this afternoon I think that's when we're going to be uh, um, sharing here yeah we'll only have about an hour again this afternoon so uh, you got your folks uh, get your listening caps on okay because I'm gonna just say this once and we're not gonna hear it again but this is the truth, you know, that we know, we understand, and that everything has been discovered for us. Ever since we've been in school, they discover things for us all the time, right? We never did discover anything on our own. But when you do discover something on your own, and then that's the truth, okay? We do not have a written language. Because our people were innocent, they're very intelligent. Like children, they're very intelligent. They're innocent. That's how we live our life before uh, Satan came. And um, this way we were very intelligent. They were intelligent that they never wrote nothing down because they know that would destroy our mind. You can lie, you can cheat, you can steal when you make a written language a law, you know. Because they know that. So they never wrote nothing down. And this way, you have a very powerful memory. When you begin to write things down, then you don't have to remember. Okay. And our mind goes off in kind of an unconscious state of mind. You know, kind of sleep. Our mind, they put our mind to sleep. But this was prophesied long ago, maybe six, seven hundred years ago, that this was going to happen. And it has happened to us. Our mind went off in a state of unconsciousness. This is the power. There's another power here that knows how to put our mind to sleep. Who's telling the truth? Is this savage standing up here? Is he telling the truth? Is he really? Well, I don't know. I think. Maybe. Hell, I don't know. Because we have two minds. Okay. That's the mystery about us today. We'll talk about that in our little circle next time. But this is all something that we must do if we want to correct ourselves. Okay. If we want to correct, then we can have, be happy here. Because Tsukashiva, he created everything here. And uh, uh, so the red man, he never created anything. He already created this for us. So it was beautiful. It still is. It's just our mind has been corrupted, misled, and conditioned, and attitudes, and all those kinds of things. But nevertheless, the beauty is still here. There is consciousness out there, a great consciousness. We need to develop ourselves. We need to have one, one mind again. It is very hard to do because the English language is not a spiritual language. It's a business language, okay? Has nothing to do with your inner feelings. There's no words to describe how you feel inside. It's a business language. We manipulate each other. We we do all these kinds of things. We put ourselves above each other because of our ego. That's why it's hard to be spiritual. Those are some of the things that knowledge, wisdom, Tokashima, a great spirit, revealed those to me. And this way, we can help ourselves. But again, you don't have to believe what I'm telling you, okay? You do not have to believe a word I'm saying. It's up to you as an individual. But we'll share some more about our misery today. <laughs> and, uh, you know, and the good thing, you know, today there's, we live in misery today. 
are depressed. We won't talk about that. Why we are depressed today. And uh, uh, myself, you know, I, I choose to be happy. I choose to be and live here in a real good way and don't not to be insecure and uh, just have what I have and it's good. You know, the spirit told me uh, in a ceremony that um, I used to work, you know, and uh, I have my people who are caught up in alcoholism and drugs. And I used to work in these places and help them with the truth. We have a sweat lodge. We go in there because our belief system is based on purity. We purify our mind, our body, and our spirit. We go inside. God, it gets hot in there. We put stones. I don't know. Any of you have been in a sweat lodge before? You know? I put them hot stones in there. We sweat out our impurities. You know? Our mind, we put cedar in there to get the negativity out of our mind. For a brief moment, we have a pure mind and we talk with God. We don't talk about him, but we talk to him, you know, and it gets really hot. Sometimes uh, we wish we were in a nice air-conditioned church, but uh, this, is, <laughs> this is the way it is with us, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but this power, you, you, you begin to develop spiritually, you know. And uh, how long did it take? So I'm not used to wearing these things, all this around me. <laughs> so, well, uh, I brought some feathers with me because I was going to show you that we use these feathers for ceremonial. These, all these eagle feathers, uh, some of them are decorated really nice like this here because uh, again we believe that these uh, winged ones they dwell in the universe where the Wakantanka the great spirit dwells and we say great spirit is all around us wherever we go but we have this kind of prayer feathers we use and it's for different Purposes. And this here too this is a, a wing feather. As I was saying, I, I brought all this here so I can show you. I could talk about it, but I bring brought all of it so we could see it. And this comes from an eagle, from uh, this side of the eagle wing and it's a, a whistle this is used in the sun dance so i just want to show you this and uh like uh, my mentor here tatonka hikita and the way he talked about the spirit, spiritual spirituality but I believe we're all spiritual people like he expressed the four races of people on this earth the creator put on this earth and maybe at the beginning of the time when we were not so systemized he always talks about that too that we all had a way of, of life like we say we don't call it a religion we call it a way of life. The way we live, the way we live at this time, at this moment, the way we express ourselves to, to Kashila, Wakantanka, and the difference is about we talk to God, we talk to the Spirit, we talk to the Great Spirit, we have songs to the Great Spirit. We don't talk about God, we don't talk about different uh, 
saints or different, you know, deities, statues, we talk about God. We don't talk about that. We talk to the great spirit in this way, just simple ways, using feather, using songs, like I sang a song here. So, if I could just go ahead and show these other mentors that I, I was telling you about when I was in Germany, I found out that uh, other mentors were over there. This is Archie Lame, Archie, Archie Fire Lame Deer. I met him in, uh, in uh, California. There was a Sundance there at this uh, Sacramento. Uh, another man, his name is uh, Dennis Banks. He's one of the American Indian movements that uh, had a Sundance there. And uh, I met this man there, but he's been uh, around in different uh, states there uh, talking about, these are the wisdom, the wisdom keepers. They know a lot about their, the way of life of their tribes, where they come from, his, his uh, Lakota. And the other, <clears throat> this is Fool's Crow. Uh, when I first sun danced there in uh, Greengrass, South Dakota, he was in his age at that time, but I got to shake his hand. He's one of the medicine men of the Lakota tribe, a spiritual leader, one of the oldest at that time. And I shook his hand at that time. He was, he was just in a. Uh, he was just laying, laying down in a. Uh, on a on, on a small couch, a bed. When I went, he was at the Sundance, and I got to meet him like that. He has a lot of books about him and stories about him. So. The other, is uh, Wallace Black Elk. You heard of uh, Black Elk Speaks? This is one of his grand, great, great, grand, grandson of uh, Black Elk, the one that you read about him in the Black Elk Speaks. And I met him uh, in California in, in a teepee ceremony we had up in uh, a place called Tapinga Canyon. Uh, and he uh, also, I sweat with him. I learned a lot from him. So, some of the mentors that I are showing you here, and this one here is Martin Hybear. He, he uh, took me on a vision quest, or he was one of the Assessors of the Vision Quest, I went to uh, Bear Butte, South Dakota. Bear Butte, South Dakota is a place, it's a hill, pretty well known about all Native people in the Indian country, where one of our leaders of the Lakota, and his name was uh, Crazy Horse, and, and some of them uh, also uh, Sitting Bull. A red cloud. Uh, um, some of the uh, known well, uh, known chiefs that are from the Lakota tribe. And he is from uh, Bear Butte, uh, Eagle Butte, South Dakota. And he put us up in the, on the hill for four days without food and water. So I went through a vision the time I was there four days, I, I, I visioned about the four seasons. First day was hot, second day was cold. We had rain, we had thunder. So when I went back to my home reservation, we started uh, our, our ceremonies of uh, the changing seasons, and that still goes on today like uh, this coming uh, fall equinox. We have a ceremony, and then the coming of a winter, winter solstice, and then spring equinox, 
and then summer solstice. And we have these ceremonies, um, bringing all people together. Because our people are like, we say, uh, we unite. And then to be thankful. Thankful for our health, thankful for all the things we have in our lives. Most, most of all, health. And then compassion, to, to love one another, to be kind to one another. Those are the three things that our people do in, in gatherings, that we all come together. And we have different uh, gatherings, and I'll talk about it also. Uh, and this here is Mar Marcel, Marcel Sperhart. He is uh, another, he's a, he's a peyote man through this uh, Native American church. Um, I've went to some of his uh, ceremonies, um, sitting up all night. Our ceremonies is just not like an hour. Our prayers go from 12 hours in a teepee, starting when the sun goes down. And we sit up all night until the morning when the sun comes up. And this is the kind of man he was. And then, uh, like it was talked about, Vision Quest. Vision Quest takes four days without food and water. And then sun dances also. Dancing to the sun for four days. So those are some of the uh, ceremonies of these uh, mentors that I met in my in the Indian country. This is Sitting Bull. You know, when the school started here, I said two years ago, or is it a year ago? Yeah. Well, a year ago. Sitting Bull. He had, has this quote about children. And he says, let us put our minds together and see what life we can make for our children. And that's something that um, today, you know, that's what we think about our youth, our children, that uh, we want to make, like it says, make, we can make uh, good for our children, make them to get educated and also the way I see this uh, education system now like now we this uh, education here goes a little bit depth of what they teach in a in a regular public school where they teach them about the planting the earth playing in the trees touching the earth touching all the elements of the earth and that's what I see here. And also, I, I, I witnessed that they pray before they eat, which they probably don't do in other uh, public schools. But this is how our people continue to use this, uh, talking to God, talking to the Spirit. And uh, good things happen when you talk to great spirit. You know, good things come about comforting feeling that when we talk to great spirit and that's how we how i've been brought up and that's how i live my way of life that i still do that to this day wherever i go i i pray a lot through the nature all the vegetation on this earth animal life even extend my prayers to all mankind all the humans that are on this earth and that's how it, it has been with our people. Before we, I was, uh, I was a councilman back in the 70s. And that's what we do before we start our, our council meetings. And we would pray before we start. And I was working for the um, Pima County in Tucson and the board of directors in Tucson, they asked me to come over there and say some invocation before they start their decision-making. 
before they start their reading. So, so this kind of went all over different places of the way that we should put Creator, Great Spirit in front of us. Like I say, everything happens, everything becomes good when we put God in front of us. I think this is it. Is there another one? Oh, and this is uh, Chief Seattle. Because of our people, when they, when they were following the ways of nature, he was one of them that talked about the nature, about what's going to happen if we don't take care of the nature. And he says, all things share the same breath. The, the beast, the trees, the man, the air shares its spirit with all the life it supports. In other words, he also said, we're all connected. We're all connected to life. What befalls the earth befalls the children of the earth. That was another one of his quotes that he said. And today, that's what we see today, you know, the changing of the climate. We see a, a lot of this uh, in different areas of uh, Mother Earth that has been affected by, by this uh, green gases that pollutes the air. All of these uh, factories and all the digging into the earth, and the fracking, and all of that has affected already the earth like that. But that was one of his quotes that he, he said it was going to happen. So these the chiefs are some of the chiefs that are probably back in the uh, 1800s, and, and they're gone. So uh, it, maybe the next. And this is a sweat lodge. It's similar to your saunas, like uh, Tatanka Hikita was talking about. It's a place where we go in and and this is the only place that I know of that we call, uh, what we say is we're all going to go in there and we're going to purify ourselves. It's a very spiritual ceremony. And the only place that uh, we go to a process of a rebirth. We talk about this uh, sweat lodge as a, a womb. And when we go inside there, we are in our mother's womb like a child just to be born. And so we go in there and we purify ourselves. And through songs and through prayers. And it was said too, this is the first and the last. Because in our sun dances, we go into the sweat lodge. And before we go into a sacred place, into this arbor when we start to dance. And then after we get through dancing that day, we go back into the sweat lodge, the first and last. And then the next day, for four days, we go into the sweat lodge. And so we, also the teepee is the woman we say that tipi, it has its uh, arms welcoming people to come into its womb. You see that, the ears of the tipi, or we call it the arms of the woman. So this is another uh, sacred ceremony that we, we do in Oh yeah, this is uh, where we Sundance me in, I don't know, in uh, Germany. This was just 
here past August. So I don't know he's the first one to Sundance for all you people because we, we say, you know, it's not that we're dancing for life. We're dancing for a Mother Earth so Mother Earth could provide all we enjoy. We're dancing for all mankind, all life on this earth, as I was talking about, the little bit of grass that grows upon the earth. And then that sacred tree there is, uh, uh, where I come from, it's a cottonwood tree. We, this is a, a little different tree from what we use in Indian country. It's the same. It was said one day we're all going to shake hands and we're all going to dance around this sacred tree. I see this happening here, Germany. Because every year in August we have sun dances, South Dakota, North Dakota, where I live in Arizona. So this is a, a, a sun dance, and this is after the sun dance, it's a giveaway. Uh, gave me this buffalo skull, which we have here in in Little Oak, and uh, all the gifts that is around there is. So we have this uh, spiritual ways of our ancestors with, that we continue to carry on. Quanah Parker. His, uh, back in the days of uh, the warfare among the Comanches and the, uh, the encounters that came to the Comanche country. And uh, there was a young woman that was captured by the Comanches and her name was uh, uh, Cynthia Parker. It was, she was nine years old when she was captured. And then she uh, lived with the Comanches until she became a woman to where she, she uh, married a Comanche man. And from that, Cynthia Parker came from, came Quana Parker. And he's uh, half white and half Comanche. It was said that in the 1880s, he got bored by a bull. And so he went looking for healing. And he went all the way to a place called uh, Eagle, I think it's Eagle Butte. And then there, uh, a, a Mexican Gundanero Mexican medicine woman introduced peyote to him. So during that four days, he was uh, using this uh, peyote, and through that four days, he got healed. And then when he was going to go back to his people, the same woman, Mexican medicine woman, gave, her the, gave him the peyote and said, take it to your people. So when he went to his people from the Kiowas, Comanches, other tribes that live in, the, in, in the Oklahoma Territory, Indian Country, Redlands, he uh, went on a vision quest. And from the way it was said that when he went on a vision quest, He took his bow and arrows and, and um, this is not a bow, but I brought this. It's like a staff. And when he brought his bow and arrow and used the peyote and he sat there for four days and uh, the spirit told him to put his weapons away because he, now he can't go hunting or because they restricted the native people there not to do that or even 
uh, fight anymore amongst the enemies. So he surrendered all of this, and, and it was said that now he can use this to pray with. So he started having these ceremonies in Oklahoma, putting teepees here and there. And the government got curious about why, why they are having these uh, teepees up. So he, they sent the Indian agent to go and investigate to see uh, what, what they are doing in the teepees. And so this Indian agent went to all these teepees and he reported back to the government saying all they're doing is worshiping using this uh, peyote and they're talking to great spirit, talking to, and, and have songs that they were singing in there. And, and so this same agent he went back to the government and told them what he saw and what he witnessed. And so he went back to the native people and said, you're going to have to call it a church. So that way the government won't be, be interfering with your ceremonies. So Native American church... Uh, you know, originated in Oklahoma. And I talk about this man, Juan Parker, because he, is, he, he started this uh, Native American church. He was the last warrior. And these are the peyote feathers that we use. And then uh, this is a replica a replica of a staff, but it, uh, back home I have a replica of a bow. And this was an arrow at one time. They pulled on the arrow. So this is how we used to pray with now. And then the drum, it has a, a drum. The, about that time when the, uh, when the reservation, reservations were put to the Native people to live on, to live in. They were given rations, like this uh, pot. It was a, a three-legged pot that they would put it in a tripod and hang it on a, and, and cook on it. Our people are half in, uh, ingenuity. Ingen, they could invent anything. So they invent a little drum like that. But what it is, it's a water drum. It's got water inside there, and it has seven stones all the way around. And uh, I'll just do, a, I'll do a one song or two, four songs here, so you can uh, listen to this drum. You can put this on top. Can you know you put that on? Put this on. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Put the drum on top here so it won't get wet. I'll sing some songs here of the Native American Church. I know I'm on a speaker, I think, here, so it's going to be loud. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all about uh, talking, seeking to the great spirit. Um, there's so many songs, but I'll sing, I'll sing one that we composed, and you can all sing with me. And it's in your language.
Yanahay <coughs> <coughs> Wani wachi elo ate hamaki ya yu Wani wachi elo ate hamaki ya yu Wani wachi elo ate hamaki ya yu yana ei ni no Wani wachi elo ate hamaki ya yu Wani wachi elo ate hamaki ya yu Wani wachi elo ate hamaki ya yu e yana ei nei no am We chone ye ye we chone ye we chone ye ye we chone ye we chone ye ye we chone ye we chone jakuki ilo dai wa hu wa chi ilo yana ei nei no we chone ye ye we chone ye we chone ye ye we chone ye we chone jakuki ilo dai wa hu wa chi ilo yana ei nei no ま、あなよと、ま、あなよと、ま、あなよと、ま、あなよと、ま、あなよと、ま、あなよと、ま、あなよと、ま、あなよと、ま、あなよと、ま、あなよと、ま、あなよと、ま、あなよと、ま、あ
it's a good way. There's nothing that is that is wrong in a ceremony. Or no, anybody I haven't seen anybody. You know, what it does is it enhances your way of thinking, enhances your your five senses. It doesn't make you any different because it was also labeled as a drug, and uh, nobody has been arrested because of that. Nobody has ever uh, hallucinate or anything like that. So maybe sometime in your life you can experience that way of worship. I get people that come to my home over there, and that's what we do. We go to ceremonies too. So I just want to talk a little bit about this here. As I was talking about the sun dance here, I'll have a. My brother-in-law here says something about the sun dance here that he experienced. But you have your chinupa. Oh, downstairs. Someone wants to hear. I will translate now to English. Maybe come here, then I will translate so that Rupert will also hear. As Rupert and his mentor. Buffalo said that they don't like English, and I will continue in Estonian. <laughs> if someone more wants to listen to the translation, they come over here. I was <laughs> saying Indian as the last one, the first 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 one, the Ei ole ammu igi telki teinud, peaks tegema järgmine nädal. Ja siis, kuna mulle saunas meeldib ka palju käia, siis ma järgmine nädal kohe tulin teist korda Lilleorgu igi telki. Ja igi telk on siia maani minu jaoks üks väga eriline tseremoonia, nagu ema visa või nagu uuesti sünd, et alguses noh, lihtsalt oli alati väga hea olla, aga siis ma hakkasin tähele panema ja vahepeal nagu järjest, et nagu, et mis see kerge mulle tähendab, et et nagu no, tuli nagu mingisugune suur raskus või aru saamine äkki nagu tuli õlgedelt maha või kuidagi hakkas kergem ja no, siis tuli nagu aru saamine, et see on mul lapsepõlvest peale mingi mure, mille pärast ma olen kogu aeg muretsend ja no, inimesed teavad igast murede alt mõni jääb küür, küür või isegi. See on kõik sellest, et sa kannad igast muresid kaasas et, ja iga kord, kui ma käin, kõik need laulud, seal on palved, kutsutakse päriselt veel esimanemad või looja appi ja, ja, ja on kohe tunda, kuidas on nagu pärast täiesti uuesti sündinud. Ja siis päikese tantsust, ma keskendun praegu rohkem sellel, et esimest korda meil käisin üks lakalael, kes on nagu vanaisade vanaisa, Tolteekid, tolteekide, kes oli tolteekide pealik, aga tolteeki, kui sellise suguaru ei olegi olemas, vaid nad kutsuvad tolteekideks tead veel inimesi. Ja tema oli siis nende pealik ja siis tema rääkis ja, ja ka veel mitmed, kes veel rääkisin ja siis hästi huvitav, et kui mis ma tähele panin, kuna päikese tantsust rääkisid, siis nagu hääl murdus või läksid kuidagi, muutusid nagu hästi alandlikuks ja, ja see tekitas minus ka uvi ja noh, muidugi ka Rupert üle 30 aasta käinud ja need lahedad armid ja alguses ma sain aru, et see on nagu egost, et, et ma tahaks ka no, siuke kõva mees olla, et kõik läbi teha. Ja, ja siis seal oli kaks tingimust, et, et, et sul peab olema see kotka külje tiivast siis see vile, eks ju, ja, ja siis äh, äh, minne sootalt toodud siis see savis tehtud piip. Ja siis ma käisin ka, kui looduses sattusin, siis vaatasin kogu aeg, et noh, et äkki siis mul on ka ette nähtud, et saan minna. Ja Rupert rääksin ka, et ma tahaks minna, et ütles, kui loo, no, Great Spirit tahab, siis küll saad kunagi. Ja aga no, ma ühtegi, ma olen paar, kaks kotka sulge leidnud, aga <laughs> seda ei leidnud, aga, aga siis ma veel käisin, kolm korda olen... Ameerikas käinud, nagu supporterin, 
supporterina või toetajana, et seal on kõik pere liikmed, kui keegi tantsib, see on pere liikmed ja või sugulased või sõbrad, kes on tantsija ka kaasas ja siis nemad tantsivad ümber selle härbori, siis ka nagu tantsivad kaasa ja toetavad ja palvetavad neid. Ja siis ma olen nagu saanud selle osale ta aidata teha ja siis ennem seda nelipäevad seremooniat on veel nelipäeva enne seremoonia, kus siis koos tuuakse see püha puu, võetakse maha, noor süütu, tüdruk lööb esimesed need alud ja Ja saad nendega kõike koos teha ja kaevata ja olla ja nendega koos seal telkida ja laagris olla. Ja siis nad seal seremoonial ka paljud rääkisid, kuidas, noh, päris mitmed, et kuidas on nagu nende elu muutnud. Ja noh, mul tekis siis nüüd võimalus, kui Rupert otsiski oma õpetaja jälgi seal Saksamaal ja seal osa võtta. Ja seal on ka hästi huvitavad need inimesed, kes viivad. Nad on nagu ise ideaalased. Nad 18. aastast peale ja seal on terve suur kogukond. Kõik oskavad laule ja nad teevad iki telki niimoodi aasta ringi. Talvel lükkavad ka lume ära ja minimum vaja on neil kaks nädalat. Ja seal kui oled nendega telgis, seal on näiteks 15 meest ja kõik laulavad need põhimõtteliselt laule täiest noh, täis äälega, et siis noh, meil siin Lillehorus, kui me käime, siis meil mõni üksik oskab natuke laulda. Aga mis ma ise olen kogenud või õpin nendel on nagu, mis tekib on see siis see seremoonia on siis eks ole neli päeva neli ööd päeva ilma söögita, ilma veeta ja siis seal päikese, kes tantsime ja öösel siis seal samas Härboris seal mingi varju all saame siis magada. No mul oli seal madratse magamiskoit ka, aga ikkagi oli külm ja vahest. Aga tekitab nagu nende põhiväärtuste vastu hästi suure austuse. No vett ei ole, eks ole, väike kõrvetab, siis on öösel külm, siis see maa ja sul tekib nagu mingisugune nagu lähedus või... Aga seal nagu ei soovitada ka teistega rääkida, et see ongi see sama, mis... Prey Pafalo ka rääkis seal hästi palju egoost ja sellest mõtlemisest ja sa tegelikult nagu, noh, ja tegelikult sa kogu aeg selle tantsimise ajal keskendud alati puule, vahest nagu põrtmõe väikse poole ka, aga kogu aeg puule ja kogu aeg palvetad neli ööd päeva. Ja siis kui sa seda teed, siis sul ka nagu see mõtlemine kaob ära ja sa saadki mingis mõttes nagu selle ilma egota olemise kogemuse või ja kui sa oled ilma mõtet, et ta siis sul tuleb, teate kõik nii taipamiste taha ekt ja siis sa näed nagu mingit asju kõrval ja saad nagu mingi hea jälle taipamise ja Ja mis need väärtused on, mis ma olen vaatanud, on see, et tegelikult kõik hästi lihtsad asjad oolid su oma lähedaste eest. Kõik need, mis on rääkinud, et leia aeg oma lähedastele, ole inimestega lahke ja Rupert ka, nii palju kui ma koos olen, kogu oma olemusega ma nagu kogu aeg õpin temalt seda, et kuula teis, et kõiki me neid teame, aga me teame natuke teoreetiliselt, et kui sa nagu päriselt nagu need asjad läbi teed, siis nagu päriselt nagu natuke teistmoodi, noh, kõik ka elu läheb paremaks ja vahest ka väga eriliselt võib mingisuguke väärtus, väärtus avaneda. Ma lugesin ühte ühte nagu mingi oli kokkuvõtev uurimus, kes oli nagu, kes oli kliinilise surma läbi teinud, oli nagu nende inimestega palju vest elnud ja siis neil on ka nagu rääkisid, et noh, Prey Pafalo ka rääkis, kuidas peale surma natuke, mis seal neli päev on, aga et neil nagu elu jookseb silmadest läbi ja siis kui nendekest küsitaks, et mis sa nagu muuta tahaksid, siis on nagu üks ühine joon, mis kõigil oli, et no oma lähedastega rohkem aega veeta ja nagu väärtuslik oma aega ja et nendega koos olles, mitte siis, et nagu lased nõrst lõdvaks, vaid et see just ongi sinu erilline elu, et ja inimesed olid siis, kes seal päikse tantsul ka käinud, on ka saanud, siis oli seid palvetanud seal ja saanud äid sellised taipamise ja rääkis ka päris palju seda, et noh, kuidas nad oolitsevad midagi ja teist eest ja mingitest pahedest veel loobusid ja kõik sellise lihtsam aja nagu päris asja poole. Et see on siis juba hästi, et kui lühidalt tehas minu kogemus. Et ma ei teagi, kas me küsimused vastused teeme pärast või kui keegi tahab küsida jooksult. I finished, Rupert, but maybe questions and answers, but later or you want to continue by yourself? Yeah.
That's good. I was getting comfortable sitting here. <laughs> yes, it's good uh, to uh, to know about our ceremonies. Like I said, it's real simple. We don't uh, uh, just the way that we follow nature, and we continue to do that to this day. You know, like as a, as we uh, humans, you know, we. We follow our own ways of uh, worshiping. We follow our own ways of uh, finding. Like he said, we all, there's only one God. There's only one Creator. There's only one Wakatanka, Great Spirit. So it's it's something that I come over here and share with the spiritual people here. Like my mentor was saying, it's hard to be spiritual spiritual but I don't believe that because we are all spiritual people we are all spiritual people you know we we know how to talk to the nature I see in a lot of this here so it, it, it's a part of uh, how we are connected and how we as humans you know we we have gifts from the Creator that gave us these gifts you know we stand upon Mother Earth and we say that is our foundation our knees is our humility. From our knees to our abdomen is our understanding. And then our abdomen is our emotions. And then our shoulders is our burdens. And then we talk about this here. From our chin, from our neck to our chin is shame. We don't want to have shame. We want to walk with you know, being, having dignity within ourselves of who we are. One of the things we say, we don't ever criticize ourselves, put ourselves down. We're all, we always talk good about ourselves. And that also, see up here is our spirit, our mind. Our minds are so strong. You know, we know when we get sick and we can take care of ourselves. We say when we come together in a circle, we put our minds together and it could happen. Our people back then when they did ceremonies for healing ceremonies, we all got together, sit in a circle, put our minds together and the person gets healed. And then we have this here, compassion to love unconditionally, kindness, all comes from here. Heart, hearts, heart prayers, heart songs comes from here. So this is the gift that Creator gave us all as humans so we could use it in time when we need this kind of a strength, you know. We all have these strengths, our arms are a strength. So I'm going to leave this to my sister. You must, you must say something more about. I don't know which keeles rääkida, aga ma räägin ikkagi eesti keeles. I will talk in Estonian. Et ja et ma pidin ütlema paar sõna selle kohta, et kuna ma olen siin Lille Arus selle paiga algusest peale ka õppimas käinud siin Ingvar Hillido juures, et ja olnud siis ka nende indiaani asjadega kokku puutes aastast ka 96 ja, ja tema ka 99 alates, et noh, et kuidas ma näen, et need kaks erinevat, erinevast suunast tulevat õpetust, et nagu oma vahel või mis see sarnast on või et et võib-olla ma ütlen lihtsalt lühidelt, et mina olen tegelikult kogenud, et need jooga õpetused Indiast, et, et need tulevad sarnastelt meistritelt, kes on tegelikult ise ennast päriselt muutunud ja ise ennast täioslikumaks muutnud ja liikunud ju lähemale Jumalale loojale ise endale, kuidas seda siis parasi kui nimetada, et kes on tegelikult inimestena, kui saavutanud sellised kõrgemad omadused, kõrgema olemise seisundi ja elamise viisi, 
et tegelikult täpselt samasugused on need indiaani tead ja inimesed või indiaani sõdalased või indiaani vaimsed praktikud, et tänapäeval tänu sellele ajaloole on ju paljud ära hävitatud, aga kui ajast tagasi minna seda võimsemad need meistrid olid, et tegelikult see õpetusliin on hästi sarnan, et üks selline iidne joogameister on samasugune indiaanlane või üks indiaanlane on samasugune iidne joogameister, kes see nagu see õpetaja seal videos rääks, et kasutab enda siis seelda inimesele antud omadusi, just need kõrgemaid omadusi, mis meie teaduse vaimu juurde kuuluvad, meie mõistuse juurde kuuluvad, et kasutab neid parimal viisil, et mina olen olnud õnne ka seal indiaanimal mõned korrad käia ja ma olen tõepoolest oma silmaga näinud seal väga teadel olevaid inimesi, nad on kogu aeg tead veel. Neil on võibolla raskem niimoodi mõelda, nagu läne inimesed mõtlevad, et nad ei oska seda hästi, sest aga nad oskavad olla hetkes ja olla väga tähelepanelikud ja nad on väga alandlikud inimesed, et nii alandlik inimesi siin kandis eriti ei näe, et nad on nii alandlikud inimesed, et kui nad seal tippis koos öösel on ja siis kedagi peavad terveks ravima, siis kui see, ma hakkan ise ka nutma, siis kui see, kes seremooniat läbi viib, seal siis palvetama hakkab, kui ravida on vaja, siis seal on nii tugev sõna otseses mõttes Jumala kohalalu, et ommikuks see mees, keda ravitaks on 40 aastat noorem ja tuleb seda tervenu välja, et see mees, kellest ma räägin, temal oli mitu vähki ja leukeemia ja see oli, noh, see oli väga liikutav, mida ma omikuks nägin et ja siis sa nagu päriselt näed, et need on väga lihtsad inimesed, ta ei ole võibolla eriti koolis käinud, ta on võibolla alkoholismist välja tulnud või narkootikumidest välja tulnud ja ta on võibolla väga raske seal, kus ta elab selle reservaadis, aga ta tuleb võibolla õhtu sinna telki sisse, et on väga vaened, on dressides ja tossudes mõnis, sa vaatad, et noh, mis tüüb see nüüd siia tuli ja siis kui see mees öösel seal võtab trummi ja need instrumentid ja päriselt suulahti teeb, sa saad aru, et see on midagi muud, mida silma kann näha, et selles mõttes Mina olen oma elus kogenud, et üks asi on nagu teist täiendanud ja tegelikult juured on samad. Ja et selles mõttes väga tänulik indiaani rahval, et Ruperti ja teised ka siin Eestis on käinud, et mina olen kogenud, et see viis, kuidas nemad õpetavad, jõuab inimestele väga hästi kohale. Et see, mis puudutab need südamlike omadusi, puudutab seda vahetud loo ja Jumala poole pöördumist, Ja puudutab seda lihtsalt kontakti loodusega või mis näitab väga lihtsalt, et kes me inimestena oleme või et mis on see õige austusega suhe selle kõige vastu, mis meie ümber on. Et joogaõpetuste esimene eetika reegel on täpselt sama, mis indiaaniõpetuste esimene eetika reegel, et see ütleb, et kõik see on elav ja kõik see on püha, mille keskel me elame ja... Ja ütleb, et mitte midagi ei ole tegelikult inimese oma sellest. See on esimene sama etika reegel mõlemas õpetuses ja ülejäänud asjad võivad ka üsna sarnased olla. Aga selles mõttes ma ei hoia siin rohkem aega kinni, aga olles näinud neid indiaanlasi siin Eestimaal päris palju ja käinud erinevas kohtades ringi ja erinevate inimeste juures siis. No ma ütleks, et suur tänu, et on aidanud meie inimesi tagasi ise enda ja oma juurde juurde, et mida siis keegi paras jõuk võtsinud on, et... Anna mikrofoni tagast. Sorry, this was in Estonia. I'm sure you said some good things. But I know you know that this is really connected to all different denominations of teachings, you know. And like I said, it's really simple. If you have faith and belief in all what we do, it all works out. So I, I know that uh, you have to have this belief in faith. That's how we are, you know, some, the faith that we have, these healing songs, so we could heal the earth too at the same time because the earth is really in need of our prayers for all the time that the earth has been abused. So we, we need to think about all of this and how precious water is. You have a lot of water here that is so clean and so pure. I like coming here because I, that's what I say, you have a lot of life here. You have a lot of spiritual life here. All the green, the grass, the trees, 
even eagles that come around. So we have a lot of life here. And that's what I like about when I come here and I, I really enjoy my life. No time to be miserable. It's a waste of time. You have to feel good every day. Waking up back home, you know, we, we are sun people. Our ancestors back then, they would wake up with the sun. All they did was they would go to the sun, put their hands like this, wash themselves with that rays from the sun. The sun moves from east to west, and we say, I'm going to follow you. I'm going to follow you, son. I'm going to leave everything that happened back there because I can't change it. We can't change things that happened within our past. We have to all move forward in our everyday life. Even if they surprise me. And I get surprises, you know. Yeah, I get real good surprises, you know. Sometimes maybe I'm just having a little hard time, but, you know, somebody come here, come by me and say, hey, you need help, I'll help you. You know. And a lot of times we have so much pride that we don't ask for that either help. You know, we all need each other. We're all human beings. We all need each other. So we could uh, all have a good night tonight. We say today was a good day. And there's better days to come. We always say better days coming tomorrow, the next day. So I'm going to conclude here. If there's any questions, again, maybe I shouldn't say conclude because we were talking about the circle. No beginning, no end. So we might be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> So if there's any questions, it'd be, it'd be good. And if not, we can, uh, I can sing one song, and then we can. Yes. Any questions? <laughs> Instruments? Songs? Oh, yes. I want to ask you about some of the things you want to ask about some of the things you want to ask about some of the things you want to ask about some of the things you want to ask about some of the things you want to ask about some of the things you want to ask about some of the things you want to ask Võibolla Rupert teab rääkida sügavamalt lähemalt, aga mis mul lihtsalt praktiline kogemus oli. Ma ka seal palvetasin kogu aeg, mul oli kolm suukes suurt asja, mille pärast ma nagu palusin kõik kõik neli päeva ka siis kui mulle pandi ka noh, siit pandi nagu nööri ka siit kinni ja sinna nööri, noh, sinna see kõie üks ots oli seal tipus ja siis sa nagu läksid puust ja siis nagu niimoodi repisid ja siis öeldi, et nagu kalluta taha ja siis siis noh, siis on nagu valus ta siit nagu tõmbab No see midagi väga hullu ei olnud, nahk oli lihtsalt ilusti naha väike riba on tegelikult. Aga mõni on niimoodi, et ta isegi jooksis ja tegelikult oli tund lahti, et jäi nagu kinni. Aga selle palvetamise hetkel see siis meister, kes seal paras jõugu läbi viis, ütles, et noh, et kalluta veel nii, et sa ikka tunned ka korralikult. Ja siis ma tundsin nagu suurt palu ja siis ma tekis nagu selline tunnel või fookus või, et ma nagu unustasin nagu kõik oma mõtlemise ära nagu siis, noh, nagu see palu ja kuidagi vaatasin seda puud ja siis need palved tulid nagu mõnes mõttes nagu südame põhjast või palju tugevamini kui muidu, et muidu ikka nagu taustal nagu mõtled või analüüsid ka natukene. 
et see oli üks, üks asi, aga mis veel, Rupert, ma arvan, et see on ka seotud, on nagu, et meil ei ole nagu Jumalale nagu midagi vastu anda või, et kui me nagu öö läbi palvetame ja põlvede peal oleme näiteks 24 tundi või 48, siis sa nagu annad ära oma mingit mugavust või, või mingisuguse, noh, et sul on nagu raske olla või et sa võtad mingi väikse kannatus, et siis sa nagu oferdad selle ja siis sa saad võibolla midagi vastu. Et nii palju mina aru sain, aga Rupert teeb täpsutada. It was said long time ago when, a, when the white buffalo calf pipe woman came to the Lakotas during the time when they were having uh, a hardship, hard times. There was no animals, there was uh, no, no buffaloes, no deer, no, that they uh, uh, hunted to survive. And that time they said it was a, a beautiful uh, woman that appeared to them and he was carrying a bundle behind his, her back and the first pipe said it was a uh, made out of a calf, calf bone this here is made out of a red stone comes from red, uh, red stone minnesota right where the where, where this uh, stone comes from, or what they make pipes out of now. But it was said that it wasn't, uh, when the buffalo woman came to them and told them how to use the pipes, how to use the pipe, Chachinupa. But for a long time it went by and they haven't, they had put their Chinupas away. So this one man, he had a vision and he said, we must bring the pipes back. We must start using the pipes and pray with it again. So he, he, he through his vision, it was said there's going to be seven songs of the Sundance. And it was said that you're going to have to wear a, a, a skirt, like you see here. And it was said that you, ha you have to prepare yourself and get a rope. And this is choke cherry uh, uh, piercing sticks that I have here that I've been using in my time. And it was said you have to f fix some of these uh, sticks from the choke cherry. And then he was said too that you have to have a whistle from an eagle bone. And then you have to prepare yourself with the sage. So we have the sage crown. I don't know if we bring a sage crown, we put sage on our ankles, sage here on our arms. And that is to protect ourselves, like putting a boundary around us. So nothing would come in, disturb us while we're dancing. So the seven songs was uh, wonderful, my saying. And then the whistle was used at the same time when we were dancing around the sun, around the tree, and looking at the sun, <laughs> along with the drum beat. <coughs> and it's also a balance between, you know, the women is very respected in our traditions, in our ceremonies because the women are the ones that bring life into the world. Men cannot do that, us men. So to be able to balance ourselves with this little pain that the woman goes through as she brings life into the world. We had to pierce ourselves from her chest and then we pull from the tree. We go back and forth four times and then when we pull and pull until it breaks from our skin. And it was said that this rope is an ambivocal cord to life like the woman that brings life into the world. So that was a balance of the sun dance. And it's a four day of fast and no food and water. And then 
<coughs> the Sundance is, has gone to Indian country or over in, now over here in Germany. And uh, it's an individual commitment between the men that Sundance is. We, some of our Sundancers come out to be a what we say, also wounded healers. They, they go and talk to people about their uh, having difficulties in, in life, you know, going through some addictions or whatever, and some of them are really good counselors. Some of them become medicine people. Some of them learn uh, these uh, beautiful songs of the Sundance. So it's an individual commitment to the uh, Creator, the Great Spirit, of how they want to carry this spiritual life for himself. Like I said, some of them become healers. So that is a, a four day of Sundance. And we have also happy occasions, like marriages. Somebody want to get married before the tree. We have healing ceremonies where we, people go in, inside the tree and get healed or get fanned by the feathers or touched by the chanupa pipe. So it's also a healing. Like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's for all people that come and support families. And it's just a big gathering. And, uh, and all good comes from that. So that is a Sundance of four days of fast and uh, becoming balanced with the, the life of, of the earth and the dances that we do for Mother Earth so grass could grow all the life from the earth and the animals. We have uh, uh, buffaloes, you know, in the, in the old days was very uh, uh, like food for the people. And I, I carried some buffalo skulls which I got pierced in the back. And I, I, I moved until it broke. In other words, to bring all the animal life, like the buffalo, the four legged the winged ones. It's like everything us people, we enjoy. Everything that we have is from our mother, the earth. So that's all, that's why we dance and give us flesh, because we only own our flesh. Creator owns everything on this earth that he had made for all humans. But man only owns himself, and that's why we give our flesh. Okay, anybody else? Yes? Is it correct? Thank you. Is it correct that uh, if you want to go to Santans, uh, you need to agree to go like uh, four times in a row. It is not uh, like once. Yes, it's called commitment. Uh, once you sun dance, you have to go four times. It's like a sweat lodge, you know, when we open the, open the canvas for, for flap in the sweat lodge four times. So everything is four. Like we sing four songs with this gourd here. And it's because of the directions like he was talking about the south, the west, the north and the east. And in the Sundance, we have these flags like he was talking about. We have the flag, white flag to the south, the black flag to the west, the red flag to the north, and then the yellow to the east. And also it just makes sense because the sun comes up to the east and then it gets dark to the, to the west. And also for four races of people that's on this earth, the white people, the black people, the red people, the yellow people. So it is uh, like that for, for, for everything is for sacred number four. Good question. Anybody? about uh, 
uh, roads like uh, Red Road and no. <laughs> yes. Red Road is a, a spiritual road. It's a, it depends upon individual how they could how they see this in in, in following your personal life. It, it was said that the road could be narrow or it could be wide or it could be hard. And to these days, we, we see a lot of this uh, influence of uh, modern things that kind of directs us in this way, in this way, would say the modern way road or the good, uh, I guess I would say the traditional road or the good or even the bad road. So the red road is... Uh, a spiritual path in how we individuals follow this way. Like, again, I'm going to go back to Ray Buffalo. He was talking about it's hard to be, you know, to follow the spiritual way because you have to put all of these uh, negative things. You have to work on it, <clears throat> work on it every day, and put all of these negative things you know, aside. <clears throat> and the way that uh, us, that we follow the ways of uh, ceremonial ways that keeps us on the red road. And again, we don't call it a religion. We call it a way of life, the way that we live today. So red road could be anything that you might... Uh, we say it was, we're going to all fall someday. We're all, we're all going to go contrary to the ways of our teachings, the ways of our beliefs, the ways of our faith. But we always rely on the red road. We're going to brush ourselves up and we're going to go into the, follow that spiritual path again. Because Creator made it that way. We're, we're humans. And it's so easy to fall off the red road. That's what we mean by following the red road, the red path, the spiritual path. And it is kind of hard at times. I remember him, he would say, it's hard to be an Indian. He used to say that, you know, when we'd be out there dancing the last day, oh, it's hard to be an Indian. And he would say things like that. And then I kind of figured, I thought about it, you know, and say, I guess it is kind of true, you know, because we have to go four days. We just don't go sit in the church for one hour, you know. So it's hard to be in Indian. <laughs> we have to go, go fishing quest, you know. Go sit up there for four days without food and water. But now I say it's hard to be human. It's hard to be a human being too, you know. We all struggle in life. We say when we struggle in life, we all do that. Once we come over the struggles, everything becomes good again. You know, so that's just the way that we think about the red road, how it carries us through life. Again, belief and faith. Hope I answered your question. Any? Second mind came. So, uh, do you understand correctly then that uh, I'm putting it in a very simplified way? Then, like Indians had one mind, and then, uh, and then, uh, like the white man came with the second mind. And but where the white man got his second mind, then maybe the white man was also one-minded before. <laughs> <laughs> and then why is this? challenge or road in front of us than the second mind road. Yes, it's true, you know, like it was said, you know, when Creator put all four races of people, it's true, they were maybe a, a one mind. They have their own way of worshipping, 
They, they had their own way of ceremonials. And then somehow, like, say, the Africans have their own ceremonies, the Tibetans have their own ceremonies, you know, all the four races of people had their own ways. And so, because of uh, Indian country was discovered by greed, by uh, wealth, gold, copper, silver, uranium. When our ancestors, in fact, when Columbus came there in 19, uh, 18 or 14, Yes, when he came in, uh, I think it's 1492, something like that. Anyway, when he came to Indian country, he saw native people that he was always worshiping when they would plant the corn, when they go harvest, they would have a big ceremony because they, they were intuitive with all life on the earth. You know, so before they could take anything from the earth, they make offerings. So Columbus, he was Italian, but he, it was said that he, he was, he was uh, educated in Spain. And some time back, you know, the, they found his journal. And in his journal, it says in there that these people here are Indios. Indios which means in Spanish is in with God. So he said these people are in with God. And then uh, that became later on to be India, Indians, what they call us now, Indians. But way back then they even say that he got lost, he was supposed to go to India. Anyway, so they said there was no such map so, uh, at that time. Uh, so that's because of our people were, were one mind that, you know, they, they worshipped in, in, in respect to life on this earth, on the earth. And uh, when Europeans start coming in, they started teaching us other things, like he was talking about education. And um, the way that our native people, when he's talking about the library, all the earth is, was a library. The way that we learn from all the nature. And then we also say that all this life on this earth is our Bible. Because everything had a spirit, everything had a purpose of life. And nobody knows great spirit or God. Nobody knows God. But when I was Christianized, like he was saying, God was supposed to be somebody way up there with a big long beard looking down at the earth, you know. Or they even try to say it's like a triangle with an eye. They put it in the dollar bill. In God we trust. You know, they put images of God like that. But nobody has seen God. We know that there is a creator. And we know, even know that there is a woman that created our life on this earth. Because a man can't do that. So it being in harmony with all nature. In the Bible, it has a story about that too. And he talks about it. He said when Adam and Eve was on this earth, they were very innocent. And um, they said, Creator God told them not to eat this apple. But it was this serpent, snake, that came. And they even have a picture of it. He said it was a serpent that came and it had a forked tongue. And told them that it's okay, eat this apple. And so when they ate that apple, that's when we become two minds. That's why I also hear him talk like that, you know, about this uh, two good and bad started then. So our people were in harmony with all life on this earth until 
all of that came, teachings that we didn't understand, the religion that came to us we didn't understand, and we had uh, some of the wise people question about it, but of course, the voice of the white people were very strong. They took missionaries to reservations to, to tame the savage people, savage Indians. And there was the one president that said, kill the Indian and save the men. And that's what they did. Like I was talking about these treasure strippers from our language, from our, you know, way of life, the way we have our ceremonies. But we kept it. We still have our ceremonies. We have seven ceremonies where I come from. And all the ceremonies is about how to behave in life. How to behave in life. And there's always a wise person that would talk about, about how to behave, how to how to have faith and belief in all of what we do in life. So that's where that he was talking about our minds became good and bad, two minds. Okay. Anybody else? This is, a, you know, what we do. We don't even have to say anything. Come from my heart. Okay, where is my... The heartbeat. I brought some of the herbs that we use. Maybe I'll show it to you now. This is some green grass. You see, it's our mother's... Mother's uh, braids. From Mother Earth. It's, this is really good for women when they're on their purifying stage, when they're on their moon, their cycle. This is another thing that we talk about. You know, the women are very gifted because the women are the only ones that go through their purification every month. As men, we don't go through that. That's why we have to go sweat purify ourselves all the time. But the women, God gave, Creator gave them this gift to purify themselves every, every month. So he said this is really good when a woman is on that time to use this medicine too. And then we have this uh, sage that we use, green sage. And this comes from a sap from a tree. I thought I'd bring this and show it to you that uh, this is also a root comes from a tree, a bitter root. It's good for colds and we boil it sometimes, drink it like that. Like you can do the same with sage. And this is chaparral that comes from my home. It's also good to make tea out of. So I just want to show you this here and then you have a lot of this here, it's, it's a sage, I mean a cedar, cedar. We use a lot of this in, in our ceremonies. We have a lot of cedar trees around here and we always offer it to the fire, offer it to, or make a little shell, put shell, put some in there. It has a good fragrance. And then let me see what else I have. <laughs> Okay, I think I'll go ahead and sing. We have this uh, sage also that comes from our home. It's uh, also good for purifying, cleansing. So it's good, you know, to have this gathering this evening. It's always good to come together, as I was saying, unite, to be thankful and to have a, a conditional, unconditional love for one another, be kind to one another. We also say we might have said something bad to somebody. It's time for us to say that 
we forgive you, or for, we forgive people that go and criticize. Because, you know, that's some of the ways of our gifts from the Creator. So, I want you all to think good. Maybe I shouldn't say I want, because I know you are. You all feel good. Songs make us feel good. So I'm going to sing this song. It's a thank you song. And I'm going to sing a song about lawyer. So this could be the continuance of our, of our talk here. I want to thank each and every one of you. I'll go ahead and sing this one. It's a thank you song. Very thankful. Pilame means thank you. Tukashi la Wakantonka. Tukashi la grandfather. Great spirit Wakantonka. Pilame ya. Toka she ye 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 la pe la ma ya ye. Toka she ye 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 la pe la ma ya ye. Pe la ma ya ye. Pe la ma ya ye lo hui hu. Hui chau zani wa ma yang ku cha. Pe la ma ya ye lo hui hu. Toka she ye ye la. Pela maya ye, pela maya ye, pela maya ye lo hui hu. Hui chau zoni wa maya kucha, pela maya ye lo hui hu. Pela maya ye lo, pela maya ye. Loya, loya, loya nista me. Loya, 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 loya nista me. Loya, 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 loya nista me. Loya nista me. Loya. Aita, here, dude.